Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Gully here. Welcome back to another Polytopia video. In this video, I'm going to describe some common mistakes that new Polytopia players make and how you can fix them. Fixing these mistakes is essential for improving your Polytopia skills. Let's jump right into it. The first mistake I'd like to talk about is ignoring the writing in Rhodes tech. Writing in Rhodes are nearly required for every single game you will play. Writing allows you to expand faster than your opponent, which is essential on small to medium sized maps. When they're combined with roads, riders can move a maximum of four tiles. This movement is great for further rapid expansion, and it's a fantastic way to launch surprise assaults against enemy cities. Roads aren't just great for increasing your troops' movement, though. When you link a city to your capital, both your capital and the city will gain plus one population. On top of this, when you link five separate cities to your capital, you will gain the Network Monument, which gives plus three population to any city you choose. I typically place this monument in my capital to get an easy early giant. In your next game, be sure to give Riders and Roads a chance. The second mistake I'll be discussing pertains to what you do on your first turn. If you play a tribe that can upgrade their capital on the first turn, like Barter or Imperius, you should always upgrade it. Very rarely should you train a second unit before upgrading your capital, and you should never research attack as your first move. If, of course, you're playing a tribe that can upgrade their capital on the first turn, like Chinchi or Amaji, you can train a second unit before upgrading your capital. When upgrading your capital, it is advisable to pick the Workshop perk over the Explorer perk, as having the extra star per turn early game makes a huge difference, and you can always get an Explorer in your second or third city. The only exception to this is if you're playing on a small map with many opponents, as picking the Explorer perk can reveal some of your opponents and net you many extra stars early in the game. The third mistake is leveling your cities in the wrong order. Take this scenario for example. The city of Loli is level 1, and the city of Olik is level 2. You only have enough stars to upgrade one city. Which one should you choose? Some new players may be inclined to say Loli because you can upgrade it and get the workshop perk, netting you plus 2 stars per turn, which is better than upgrading Olik and getting just 1 extra star per turn. This, however, is incorrect. By upgrading Olik first, you can select the resources perk, which grants you 5 stars. You can use these stars to upgrade Loli and then select the workshop perk. By upgrading the cities in this order, you will have gained plus 3 stars per turn, as opposed to 2. This mistake transitions into the fourth common mistake many new players make, which is always picking the city wall perk after upgrading a level 2 city. Rarely do I ever choose to get a city wall over plus 5 stars. Sure, a city wall can be useful to hold choke points against your opponent, but they can be easily countered with ranged units. As I discussed in the last mistake, getting an extra 5 stars can go a long way. It can be used to upgrade more cities or train more units. Generally speaking, you should always take the plus 5 stars when upgrading a level 2 city. The fifth mistake revolves around how you upgrade your cities. You should never partially upgrade your cities. Doing this wastes stars and may prevent you from completing a certain action on your next turn. It's okay to not use all your stars on one turn. Feel free to carry some over to be used more effectively on your next turn. The only exception to partially leveling a city is if an enemy unit is going to move on to a city's resources you plan to upgrade next turn. When an enemy unit is on a city's resources, they are not harvestable, so it may be wise to harvest them before they can be moved on to. The sixth, and in my opinion, the most critical mistake new players make, is playing way too fast. It's okay to take a couple of minutes to plan out how exactly you want your turn to commence. You should take note of how many stars you have and what you want to achieve on your current turn, and maybe even the next turn. Plan out what techs you should research before capturing new cities. Plan out what cities you will upgrade and in what order. Plan out what troops you are going to train and plan out your current troops movements and attacks. Doing this will ensure that you make far less mistakes and will really elevate your skill as a player. I recommend turning on the confirm turn toggle in your settings to ensure you don't accidentally skip your turn or end it too early. And don't forget, you can always tap and hold on the in turn button to see if you have any units left to move. The seventh and final mistake really only pertains to players who play on custom maps and who have bought multiple tribes. The tribe that you pick should be suitable for the map type you are playing on. What exactly do I mean by this? Well, you shouldn't select Kiku or Aquarion on a Drylands map, and you shouldn't choose Venger on a 900 tile map with one opponent. This is because these tribes aren't suited for the style of play you will engage in on that particular map type. The tribe that you pick should excel on the type of map you are playing. This will increase your chances of winning. There you have it, some common Polytopia beginner mistakes and how to fix them. Did I miss any common mistakes? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Polytopia tips, tricks, and tutorials. If you're looking for another video to watch, 
check out this video where I demonstrate how you can grow your economy more efficiently in Polytopia. It's full of useful knowledge. Thanks for watching and have a spectacular day.